Hello, everyone, and welcome to my third attempt at a text editing video. But as they say, third time is the charm, because today I have a new tool to show you that won't need you to change the version of Java that you have on your computer. And it's the mighty DSPRE, which we can jump right into. Okay, so like usual, go ahead and open up DSPRE itself, like so. Open a ROM, like so. And today we're looking at the text editor. It's pretty straightforward, but the main thing you want to know is that the game's text is broken into a lot, and I mean a lot of text archives. So your first challenge is to know which archive you need to open to find the text you're looking to edit. The most direct way is with the search option, which I can just pull in here, go, my name is Rowan. Hit enter. And I get a result down here that I can double click, which will jump me to 389. And this is the text bank for the intro where Rowan has to pick a character and your name. And then once I'm here, I can just double click on a line like right here. And I can change this to a good, no, good day. Tapping is hard. And then this little icon will show over here saying this is now an edited line. And if I save it, that goes away. And that's not been changed. Where I can now scroll down and up. And that's still changed here. So like I said, super simple. But what you want to know next is about the slash ends here and the slash R's. This is basically the word wrapping to keep the text inside the text box. A slash N here means that this text will stay on the first line and then this line here will appear underneath it in the same box. And then this slash R will have the text box pause where it'll wait for the player to hit A and then it'll clear out these two lines and then put in this line. And this is what controls the flow of the text presented. Where I assume that slash n means new line and slash r means row. I'm not sure why slash n isn't slash l for line, but you know, it's still pretty straightforward. Now this middle one here doesn't have to be a slash r. But if you look down here, you see there's a slash n, then another slash n here. So that means that this line will show up first, then this line. But then this slash end here will wait for the player to hit A, and it'll push these two lines up. So this one disappears, this one moves up by one, and then this one rises up beneath it. So it still progresses the conversation, but it looks different because you're not clearing out the box, so you're just pushing lines up. They both work the same, so you can pick whichever one you want to use as needed. And that's really it. The only other main thing you need to know about text editing is that you generally want to have about 30 characters, well, 30 to 35, between every slash n or slash r. That's about how many characters one row of the text box can normally hold. And from there, you can edit most text in the game as you want. But as usual, I have some extra tips to show you. Well, for example, if you go over to the header editor, you could look up text banks by the location. Like if I wanted Twin Leaf Town, Alright, so that's here, loads the uh, header on this side. And I can just click on open text. And that will jump me to this text bank, 554, which holds all the text said by NPCs on Twinleaf Town. And this works for most text. Generally, you can find the text you're looking for based on the location of where it's set. Though there are some exceptions. Like if I come back over to the header editor and same people entering in new maps, trying to make their own world. If you wanted to edit this list here, the location names, this is a list in the text editor as well. So if I come back over to the text editor and I do a search for Twin Leaf, it's mentioned a bunch of times, but where I want it is where it's said just by its own name. I double click it to come to 433 and this is that same list. So I could just edit this entry here to edit this one here. And then another example 
is the text that trainers say. Could you expect from what I said before that if you went to say like uh, Route 209, and open the text, that this would have all of the trainers that are on that route. But for trainers, they're all stored in the same large archive. So you can just search our eyes met. And then we come down here. And this is what the first trainer in Platinum says when you walk past them, which is an archive 617 where every trainer <laughs> Ooh, in this big long archive is inside. And this has all the scenarios as well. This is the same trainer when they first see me, when I beat them, if I talk to them after I beat them, and then later again if I fight them with the Versus Seeker, which is why this archive is so dang long. Oh, and the next tip I want to show you, which is one of the biggest things this tool can do, is that you can search for something like, let's say, Charizard. And you'll find all of the instances where they say the word Charizard. And what I can do down here is type in, like, Death Lizard. Then click this button to replace every instance of Charizard with what I want. Now, the reason why this is called Search and Replace is that's going to rerun whatever you have up here. So you don't want to change anything up here before you type in this down here. Because if I did this, then I clicked match case. When it reruns this search up here, it's going to try to match the case, which doesn't match any of these. Something will change. So you want to be careful not to adjust this at all. So when you do it correctly, you do search and replace. You get this message right here that says it's exactly what I want it to do. So I hit yes. Okay, so I hit okay. And then if I do another search from this top part, it shouldn't find anything because Charizard's no longer here. It is only Death Lizard. And there we go. And this is super helpful if you're trying to rename Pokemon or trainers or anything like that. You can do it in one fell swoop, but you need to be careful if what you're entering is longer than the original text, like Death Lizard's a little longer than Charizard. So I'm going to want to go in to each of these listings. Let's say this one. And I need to count out how many characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that might be close, but to be safe, what I'm going to do is move that slash n here. There we go, and then count out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, Okay, so that's good. So you want to make sure that the slash n's have a proper spacing so that the text will fit in the text box still. So you want to check each of these to make sure they are all good to go. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you guys is the macros you've been seeing. Like if I go back to Twin Leaf Town, open text, so you see these here. So if I look at this here, it'll say Haya macro, and then new line macro was looking for you. These mean, so Haya player name, and then the new line, rival name, was looking for you. So this would be your name that you picked for Barry, or Roy, or whatever his name is. And then this one is the name you entered. Now these macros are used with scripting. So if you want to really understand how these work, you're going to want to watch my scripting video around the 40 minute, 40 second mark. Where I properly show the commands that are used to make this macro work. And why would one of these has a zero, and why one of these have a one, and why those zeros and ones are not consistent when you look at different scripts down the road of which one's the rival and which one's the player and stuff like that. It'll make a lot more sense if you watch that part of the scripting video. But if you don't want to get into all that, 
All you need to know is that if the macro is here in this line, you can move it around inside that line and it won't break anything. But if you want to add one of these macros to this line, it most likely won't work unless you modify the script file a little bit, like I show in my scripting video. So just try to keep the macros in their same line if you want simple text editing. And then also, these characters don't count towards like the 30 you want to have between a slash n. You just have to kind of picture it because the name can be anywhere between one character and seven. So if you're still letting your player pick their name, just always assume that the macro take up seven characters. So you can't be wrong. And okay, you should now have everything that you need to start text editing. Oh, the one thing I can say, which may not very often be needed as doing a very advanced hack where you're adding more headers and stuff, is that there is a button here to add archives if you need to add more into your ROM hack. But I'm going to assume that most of you aren't going to need to do that. So then once all of your edits are done, you just go ahead and make sure that you've saved your last bank you had open. And then click the main save button here where you can save a brand new ROM with all your changes saved, which I'll just call text. And save it. And there it is. And you're good to go. And okay. As usual, this version of DSPRE has been added to my tools folder. Which will be right in here. So you can get it by downloading it from the description. And then as time passes, you can also check here to see if new versions are out with new features and bug fixes. And as always, leave me a comment or come to the Discord if you have any questions or run into any trouble. And I will see you guys in the next video. Good night, everybody!